Hello, this is Jeff Creasy. My children are high school students at Lafayette High School. I'm calling because of my continuing concern with the lack of uh, competition for winter sports. Every other school in the Bay Rivers District, with the exception of the James City County Public Schools, are participating in winter sports. It's been clearly established that sports like swimming can be safely contested, and there are protocols in place to manage them uh, with, without any risk with respect to COVID. All of these students should have the opportunity to compete with their peers in the Bay Rivers District. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christopher Waski. I was just calling to express my family's strong desire that Williamsburg JCC schools go back to in-person learning. Uh, this has been happening in other places around the country. They are able to do it safe and effectively. Um, it seems uh, unwise to me that we think that in-person schooling is not more important than staffing a Virginia ABC store to sell alcohol or any of the other number of jobs where everybody is going into work, putting on masks, social distancing, and going to work. Um, this online schooling is, uh, for my children in elementary school, basically worthless, um, and it's disheartening to see the, uh, the kids just getting pushed through um, with um, the quality of education that's going on right now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wesley Clark. I live in Williamsburg. My daughter is in Bright Beginning. In November, someone we spent time with was exposed to COVID and was waiting for their results. I contacted Bright Beginnings and was really surprised to learn that we could have sent our daughter to school, even though we had been exposed to someone who possibly had COVID. We chose to keep her home that day just to be safe. And I'm really glad that we did because the person that we had close contact with did end up testing positive for COVID. I would really urge the district to change the health guidelines to be a little bit more strict. If any student has had contact with someone who's waiting for their test results, then that student probably needs to stay home so they don't infect other students and teachers. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Stephen Michael Cranford. The children in our area need to be in school and participating in after-school activities. We have two grandchildren in Keller, Texas, 8th and 11th grade, where the COVID numbers are much higher, and both have been in school at their desks and participating in after-school activities, including sports, since August. Let's get the children back in school. The board has taken the easy way out. Thank you. My name is Eric Hurt. I have a sophomore at Lafayette High School. Uh, in looking at the surrounding localities, Prince George has successfully instituted in-person learning and athletics. With a school budget of 25% more per student, surely our school administration can devise a similarly successful plan to return students to school and athletics. My son is a resilient young man with every advantage, yet I see his daily struggle with online learning and isolation. It's not hard to imagine the devastation that many less advantaged students must be experiencing. The cost of this harm and isolation finds no support in CDC guidance. With this failure of leadership and innovation, it is fair in the future to oppose any candidate who supported the current model or any increase in school budgets they may request. Hi, this is Tara Hurt. Uh, please consider getting our children back into schools as soon as possible. You are failing our students. They are suffering both academically and emotionally. We need strong leadership and creative solutions and get them back in schools. Students have been back in person in full-time school buildings since August across our country, in our state, and in fact, right here in Williamsburg with very low or no incidence of COVID. Research, research has shown that school is not the spreader. Dr. Fauci himself said children need to be in school in person. I also would like you to reinstate winter sports. Why is James City County the only school system in the Bay River District not engaging in sports? We currently see in Williamsburg that winter sports are being played safely in club settings. Our students deserve more from your leadership. Thank you. Yes, hello. My name is Brian Huckins. I have uh, grown up in the Williamsburg James City County school system uh, since 1980. I have two children that have gone through uh, beyond myself and two siblings. Uh, what's going on right now in in the um, 
inability for our kids to be in school is not science-based or data-based, and it needs to stop. The impact to them is beyond uh, uh, reproach and repair. We need to get this resolved, get our kids back into school immediately, not next fall, immediately. Hi, my name is Colin Quigie, a uh, freshman at Lafayette High School, and I think it is ridiculous that you are not letting us swim when every other school in our district is having a competitive season. Hello, my name is Aiden Creasy. I'm a senior at Lafayette High School. I would like to know why Williamsburg James City County Schools are the only school district in the Bay Rivers District not participating in winter sports this year. And all of us would like the opportunity to swim for our schools this year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Elliott, and I'm curious to know um, why is it that in James City County we are the only um, schools that are not participating in winter sports um, in the Bay Rivers District. Um, Virginia Beach has um, called theirs this evening, and they will continue with theirs going forward, and they will play now. So that just leaves um, James City County as the only schools not playing. Um, so that's one area of concern. Also another concern, um, if kids are able to uh, be in school in the private realm and things seem to be going well without issues, why is it that we can't get our kids back into the public schools safely? Um, that's the second area of concern, um, both being one as important as the other. So I, will, I would like to have my name is Kelly Creasy. I have a senior at Lafayette and a freshman at Lafayette. And I am calling to ask you to reconsider canceling winter sports. We are the only school district in the Bay Rivers District that will not be competing. When you cancel sports, you don't just cancel opportunities to compete. You cancel the 15 minutes before practice when everyone is in transition mode from class to training. That's when their kids are at the kids are at their most honest. When you cancel sports, you cancel the 6 a.m. training time when an athlete is around an adult that knows they care about them. When you cancel sports, you cancel an athlete's motivation to eat healthy. When you cancel sports, you can cancel goal-oriented kids' desire to work on a training plan. You cancel some students' reason to go to school at all. You cancel common ground my name is Erica Nelson. I have children attending Matoka Elementary and Hornsby Middle School. I support the children having the option to go back to school full time as well as school sports. I believe our children should have the opportunity to learn in person and children with parents who wish them to remain online also have the opportunity to do so. Thank you. My name is Cheryl Cranford. And I've been a resident of Williamsburg since 2005. I've had the pleasure of seeing five of my grandchildren graduate from Lafayette High School, where I followed them in their sports activities and just enjoyed uh, their lives. I have a sophomore at Lafayette High School grandson, who is miserable because he is sitting in front of a computer for his online education all day and then on the computer doing his homework. This is just not right. And as a grandmother and a nurse, I am extremely concerned about... My name is Samantha Bursky. I have a ninth grade at Jamestown High School. I'm calling in support of full in-person learning for our children. I do feel that we are leaving the children behind, that they are not getting the education that they need, and that we are not trying to creatively look for ways to bring them back to school safely and appropriately. We can find ways for them to come back, for their education to be, to be put first. And if we are able to go out in the community and do other things, our children should be able to safely go to school. Please consider bringing these kids back to school full-time, in-person versus online learning. Thank you. My name is Lindsay Taylor, and I'm a teacher at DJ Montague. 
I would like to encourage Dr. Heron and the school board to continue with remote learning for all students and allow staff the option to work safely from home. According to the UVA models from VDH, if winter weather and the holiday season increases case growth, as we've already begun to see, Virginia may see new cases peak at more than 76,000 per week during the week of Valentine's Day. However, if we take additional steps to control the spread, new cases may only peak at 29,000 per week during the week ending January 24th. Now is not the time to increase exposure, but rather decrease it to keep our community safe. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Jamie Sean. I'm calling to encourage the school board to continue remote learning into the start of uh, the 2021 school year here. Um, I try my best to stay on top of the uh, numbers from the Virginia Department of Health website, as I'm sure you have too. And uh, we can see that the numbers remain high uh, to return kids and teachers to the school at this point, I believe would it, is not justifiable. I believe it would be irresponsible in terms of managing risk. I applauded the school board when they made the decision to carry out remote learning over uh, the course of the holiday. And I think that that is, was a tough decision, but it needs to continue at this point. Um, the risk is too great. You're exposing students, you're exposing the families of students, you're exposing teachers, you're exposing the families of teachers and anybody else that they come into contact with, which is to say you expose the entire community Amy Coleman, in-person learning needs to be reinstated now. Following the science, both the CDC and AAP say students need to be learning in person. WJCC failed to create an online system that puts the students first. The students and their success have been put as a last priority and many feel hopeless. There should have been things put into place to ensure students are successful, such as correcting work quizzes and tests at least once for an increased grade in light of less instruction and less face-to-face -face time with teachers. Removing winter sports from our students when all other schools in Bay Rivers continues to compete is horrific. You've single-handedly taken scholarships away from our students and handed them to students in other districts. You've received zero input from students and families that this impacts. As a health care provider, I know the risks of COVID. It is possible to live and work safely in its midst. You allowed the option of competition taken away from students whose parents' tax dollars and votes allow you to be in your position. Bring back winter sports and reopen the virtual option for those who don't want to learn in person and open the schools to those that do. Hi, this is Stephanie Trogdon. Please take action to ease the burden of academic stress for students, specifically those receiving grade and course credits on transcripts by realigning the grading scale. This year has decreased the opportunity for academic success in so many ways. Reported grades are slipping for students who are attending Zoom and online classes, who attend classes with their cameras on, and who complete class assignments and homework. High achieving and gifted learners are also struggling with lower grades. No one is exempt from the burden of this school year. College acceptances and scholarship eligibility will be affected for our students from seventh to 12th grade. Together, the school board and the administration need to take the steps to first cap the weight of any assessment at 20%. This includes quizzes and tests in the four marking period. Rhonda Peterson, good evening. I'm a parent of a WJCC high school student in the virtual learning program and also a teacher. I'm calling to ask that students and staff continue remote learning and teaching at least throughout the end of January and revisit return to classroom hybrid learning at that time. In James City County alone, since 1225, there has been 368 new COVID cases, five hospitalizations, and three deaths. With so many families gathering and traveling over the holidays, we need to have a window for symptoms testing, quarantining, and recovery before entertaining bringing anyone back into the buildings at this time. We have also entered the time when colds and flu develop, and since their symptoms mirror COVID, we should take that into consideration when deciding our next steps as a school division. Thank you for your time, and have a great evening. My name is Angel. Blair. Um, I do have a ninth grader and I have a kindergartner. Um, and at this time, I do not feel comfortable with the children going back to school in person. My husband and I recently gotten over COVID um, at the beginning of December, and we're very cautious and very aware of what we're doing. So um, knowing that we have contracted it, I'm very nervous about my children being exposed because I know not every other parent or every other family takes precautions. Um, 
continuously to help prevent it. So just wanted to let you guys know that I am not comfortable with them going back um, and hoping that they are able to stay home just a little longer. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hillary Deaver. My daughter attends second grade at JBB. I am calling to ask for your consideration of keeping a hybrid or full-time in-person schooling option for our children. Virtual learning is not working for us. My daughter truly thrives in school out of the home. She responds well to her teachers in school and enjoys the socialization with her peers. She receives better individualized instruction in person. Small groups only do so much, and her teacher is wonderful. Across the U.S., numerous public schools and states have stayed open throughout this past fall during the COVID crisis. I ask that you reach out to our neighboring counties and states for help with solutions on how to reopen safely. There needs to be a plan in place. Is there a plan in place? Our children's futures are at stake. Mental health is important, too. I want to see all of our children have an equal chance at education. It will be one year that we have stayed home since March of 2020. Hi, my name is Claudia Kessel, and my husband is David Grandis. We have a kindergarten age student, and I wanted to um, express my support for the opening of WGCC schools full-time as soon as possible this semester. Um, I believe that schools serve an essential function in our community, and they should be treated the same as hospitals and grocery stores, we need to prioritize the education of our students. Their education is essential, it's not optional, and virtual education is either working poorly or not working for many students. It's a deep issue of equity. And please, please consider opening um, the schools as soon as possible. Thank you. My name is Crystal Jackson. I have a daughter in second grade. The school board and teachers should not be the ones making the ongoing decision to keep the schools closed with no other plans in place for thousands of students. You are taking away their education because virtual learning is not a real education. You are also stripping away at their mental health and social development. All preschools, private schools in the area are open and thriving. If staff in every store, private school, doctor's offices, nurses, gyms, restaurants feel unsafe, they would have to get a new job. All these places are open. Enough is enough. We need to open the schools or have a plan in place for those that want to go. The virus is here to stay. Our schools need to be open for our children. Hello, my name is Monique Karn. My comment to the school board and to Superintendent Dr. Heron is the following. Enough is enough. Our schools need to be open now. It's time to be bold and take action. Our students are the collateral damage of this coronavirus. Schools need to be open for the welfare of their mental health, their emotional and their social well-being. This is hurting our kids and being online education is not comparative to in-person education. We need to open our schools and let our kids back to their life. Thank you. Hi, my name's Crystal Gaffney. I have an eighth grader at Tim Anna Middle School and a ninth grader at Warhill. They're both struggling with virtual learning and I'm requesting that in-school learning resume immediately and that the school take the necessary precautions so that the children can succeed. Hi, my name is Brittany Byer. I'm two students at DJ Montague Elementary School. And although the teachers are making their best effort um, to teach the kids, uh, I feel that they are really um, suffering with the virtual learning. My kindergarten student doesn't even have 15 minutes of work a day. And my second grader is bored out of his mind because he's so far ahead of the curriculum that they're teaching and his teacher is not able to help him as she would in person learning. In-person learning can be done safely as it has been done across the country. And I really wish that you all would keep politics out of this and follow the science as you state that you are doing. If you were following the science, then our kids would be in school. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joshua Sigler. I have three children, two of whom uh, go to Hornsby Middle and one who goes to Matoka Elementary. I'm calling to advocate for return to school in at least a blended model after the holiday season. 
as an emergency medicine physician, I'm aware of the risk of the coronavirus and the current pandemic. However, I think we need to take a good hard look at the other impacts on our children and our nation as a whole. Right now, we're seeing a dramatic increase in behavioral health issues, suicides, and such. Uh, I think it's unreasonable to expect that we can just continue virtual learning until we have coronavirus eradicated, which realistically won't be for several years at the earliest. So I think it's important that we get our kids back in school and try to minimize the other social, developmental, and uh, academic impacts of this current pandemic. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hi, my name is Allison Sigler. I have three children at Hornsby Middle School and Matoka Elementary School. I'm in favor of returning to school in January in a blended model. We are a military family, just moved here, and my two middle schoolers have made barely any friends. They have not set foot in their new school, and it is truly affecting their mental health. Please, please develop a plan to get these kids back in school. Virtual is not a solution for two years. This virus is not going away. It will be here for years. We need a plan to go back to school. Thank you. Hi, my name is Thomas Beyer. Uh, I have two children, uh, one school-aged daughter who is five and another son who is eight. They both attend um, DJ Montague, and I think it is gross negligence on the part of the school board that they're not allowing kids to go back to school. I think it's uh, proven uh, time and time again that it's safe enough to allow kids uh, into schools, and there are plenty of health and safety measures that can be implemented and allow the children to learn in a format that will uh, further their education. Right now, what's being done virtually is uh, a shame, and it's setting our children back. Uh, and I believe that uh, the state and the city and the county have Hi, I'm calling on behalf of WJCC Schools as a parent of a student at James Blair Middle School. I've sent countless emails, articles, and other information because I see that COVID cases are rising. This week, students returned to James Blair Middle School. While even though distance learning has been present, three teachers are now sick with COVID, while countless others are currently being tested. I request that you look into shutting down schools in the district once more to keep our children safe. Ashley Sutherland, James City County. I call on Dr. Heron to drastically change her priorities and focus from embracing online learning to committing fully to in-person learning for those that choose it. The national reports and local data show that online learning is a failure. This school district in June focused on switching to virtual other districts and private schools recommitted to in-person learning. York County is still committed to in-person learning. You made the wrong decision. We need to see, you need to see that before we lose the rest of the school year. You have made every precaution. Let's get back to full-time school. Your hands are not tied to COVID numbers. Look at California. They are locked down, but go face to face. Please, let's abandon this cruel, failure of an experiment and get back to our mission, which is educating children. Hi, I am a concerned parent and grandmother of, of who live in your school district. We need to get these kids back in school immediately, full time. There is no scientific evidence that states otherwise. This is a failed response to a pandemic that was blown way out of proportion to begin with. We are harming our children. They are committing suicide. Please, you must open the schools and follow the science. The science has been saying, open the schools. I know too many people who have gotten COVID and are just fine. It ha Hi, my name is Amy Janukas. Um, we moved here this summer. I'm a mom of three and an occupational therapist. My parents were teachers and um, my dad was the president of the school union. 
I have the utmost respect for education. I also come from a family of doctors and medical professionals, and I have worked 20 plus years in the hospitals. I trust science. I encourage Dr. Heron to change her thinking about schools as a place of high COVID transmission. Schools are safe, and they will be safe. Kids know how and teachers and staff to use the appropriate measures to keep them safe. The Health Department of Fairfax County gave guidance to the school board that actually schools opening can reduce the spread in the community because schools can be a safe and sanitary place for children to be. Please stop using COVID as an excuse to keep schools closed. The CDC directly states on their guidance to schools that the- Hi, my name is Jackson Newcast. I'm a seventh grader at Lewis Hornsby. I just moved here in June. So I would like to be in person so I can meet people and make friends. I also think we should be in person because kids aren't getting enough in- instruction and learning that they should be getting in person in in person school. My final reason is that there are some kids in my classes that don't even show any part of them. They don't know if they are there or paying attention. Although if you were in person the teachers would be able to see you and they would know if you are paying attention. That is why I think we should be in person. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Alexander Janukas. I'm in the fifth grade at Matoka. I think we should be in person because a lot of kids either can't get online or don't have the right technology. I know kids with ADHD and other learning challenges who struggle in virtual school. School are safe and learning is just as important as going to the store, gym, and other places that are open. Those are some of the reasons why we should be in person. This is Mike Janukas. I am the father of three children that are in the school district here, uh, ages 7, 10, and 12. Um, I have to be honest with you, this has just gotten to the point where the kids need to go to school. The 2,000 roughly people affected in James City compared to the 360,000 in Virginia, this is not a high-risk area, number one. Number two, My children, when they did have a couple weeks of in-person learning, they said they were plexiglass in addition to the mask that they were wearing. So the bottom line is stop catering to the 10% or so of teachers that don't want to go back to school and do the right thing for our children and have them go back to school at a minimum two days a week. They are getting, my 7 and 10-year-old are getting an hour and a half of learning a day on their computer. That is outrageous. Hi, my name is Sydney Tanuka. I love my teacher, Ms. Reher. I am a second grader at Montauka Elementary School. I think we need to be in person for school. I know kids in my class who cannot even get online. They have no help at home. They can barely read, and I feel sad for them. Please let us start in person. My name is important, and we need to be in school. Please. Hi, my name is Rebecca Height, and my child goes to a Williamsburg James City County School. Um, I am just very frustrated with the back and forth, back and forth of the children going one day, children not going another. Um, This is not helping our children. Our children need to be in school. Um, We need to be able to do something better. We can't just continually allow our children to fail at school, at their academics. We're failing our children. We're not just failing them in school. We're failing our children in general. We're not helping them succeed in life. We're not doing anything. So I am begging you to reopen the schools. Let the children go back. And if you decide not to, then give us a portion of the money the government is giving you so that we can afford to send our children to private schools. Um, I, I want my child in school, and I can't afford private school, so this is my only option. So I need you to either give me the money so I can send my children to school, 